Hello and welcome to Darius Comic School and today we'll take a look at camera angles in comics and today we'll take a look at 100 Bullets by uh, Brian Azzarello and Eduardo Risso and we'll talk a bit about this comic and let me tell you something. Um, This one is a great case study to study uh, camera camera in comics. It moves a bit like a movie um, and that's a good thing. But as you can see, um, pretty classic like, I don't know, Alan Moore um, or Frank Miller, like here, the 12 panel grid. But even in wide panels like this, we have a grid and it's like one, two, three and it's also one two three and one two three four and i think this might one two three four help you uh, in make you make making your own comics um i know it will help um doing my own comics i will take a look not at too many artists but definitely at eduardo riso um, for the writing in this comic, before we get into all the beautiful uh, coloring and camera work, um, I have to say it does feel like um, a film noir from the from the 50s or from the 80s or 90s. But I would say it's not much here, so it, it's it's uh, a bit shallow, I would say. Um, it is all tough guy talk, and here and there I had to, to laugh, but um, certain pages and plots like just uh, didn't do it for me. Um, so writing-wise, here, here in these panels is where uh, this comic, um, and especially this issue, just died for me. It was borderline boring, but as you can see, um, the pictures, the beautiful women... Uh, the blacked out silhouettes, that's what really gets me uh, going, it gives me a pump. And as you can see here, um, the camera will will start talking about that and how you can implement that in your own comics and how um, I would say a depth depth of um, depth of field or how, how, how do we call it? Like how that will save um, almost every one of your panels. So, Let's start at the beginning. Beautiful work here, sty stylized. Um, yeah, maybe that's the thumbnail. So let's get into this comic and the camera work. As you can see here, with uh, three times, I would say the same um, panel, but yeah, you can read it in a way like a passing of time. And comic does beautiful things. So um, even though we have here uh, three panels, um, I, I call this uh, total, totale, um, and um, but we get we get we get always an angle. Like um, I would say that camera angles in comics always have to be like somewhere into the room. And if you're a Wes Anderson movie, probably the camera goes this way, and then it kind of shifts up and down. But um, usually in American movies, it's always like it goes from here to here, front, mid-ground, background, and um, beautiful stuff here. Um, our, our guy wakes up in the hospital and his face is um, kind of kind of wrecked. He had a car accident. And this is where the idea came to me because like I was looking down and then here I saw uh, these beautiful panels and I have to say I'm a huge fan of uh, Mike Mignola, Frank Miller and of the simple paint job from um, let's say Marvel from the 90s and um, Dave Stewart and as you can see this works like wonders this um, pretty simple coloring blacked out stuff and and as you can see here like it's called vanishing points but you can also think of a camera we have a camera here and here and here probably like two points like one point coming from here one coming from here 
and we have our protagonist walking out and going from here to there. So our camera needs to see that he comes out of the hospital and walking to the limousine, but also we need uh, some three-dimensional space and yeah, that's that's done with putting the camera there and and also like here like beautiful shots like we have one two three four five six seven panels but look at this now it's like seven seven panels okay but you get one beat two beats three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve and although it's not broken up in panels it is like um just a pacing like 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 you would edit and pace a movie that's how you edit and pace a page with all the room that you have and you let it breathe because one thing this comic does does really good is like um the pacing of the camera how the pictures work here you have like um, the match on the ground and this guy is going now to the piano bar with relatively small panels and as you can see here the camera sometimes goes in front uh, here we got a top view but it's just showing beats and that's beautiful and that's even more beautiful because like we have a beginning the intro uh, three big panels giving us like a cinematic feel um, where are we we are I don't know where does it play San Francisco Tinseltown um, well this is called Tinseltown but I would say it's something like New York San Francisco we're in a big city uh, where the crime is pretty seedy um, and then we get another shot then uh, we see our protagonist in the shadow. Uh, then we get 12 panels of our protagonist. And then this is like kind of the intro. Like this is the first few minutes of the movie. And then this is like the titles rolling. And then boom, here we are. Scene number one, chapter one. And as you can see, a beautiful long panel a beautiful bar, um, simplistic but not easy, and uh, the black and um, all the figures like this acts as a yin and yang. I would say uh, the space that is filled is uh, two thirds, and the black is one third, but it gives it an interesting yin and yang. And also like our protagonist, big in the front, and then. Going back, you got this guys and the barkeeper, and um, beautifully illustrated how they just are hanging out. So that makes makes it very authentic. And here you get um, a shot that's going this way. Um, I would say this is kind of an establishing shot, showing us where we are. Um, at the beginning, it's great to do this because like uh, we're getting into the story. And the more details we get, the more it feels um, lived in, the more we can believe it. And then we get a shot of this guy, beautiful hand here. Um, and then a shot again of our hero. And yeah, this one's almost a Frank Miller panel. Like, look at this, pretty comedic. And then again, a beautiful shot of the whole place but as you can see here the camera has its vanishing points uh, like horizontal lines and then the vanishing point and it opens up the room and if when or if you think what what could give uh, my comic um, that extra oomph that extra uh, cinematic feel um, study your comic book heroes um, there's a lot um, I resonate very much with this one but I love this like um, big scene big shot then we get like a, a, a mid camera and then a close-up and as you can see foreground mid ground background background mid ground foreground and even here 
we got uh, like the camera slightly slightly tilted this way and I would say this one is the foreground this one is the midground and and this is the background and yeah and also um, a beautiful thing about this comic and about movies and about comics that are really great in my personal uh, view um, is that the colors the colors complement each other um, if you if you watch a movie a good movie um, there certainly is a color palette to 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 kind of hold the scene and give the scene also um, a color a color frame I don't know how you would call it but as you can see here it's like red and blues uh, red a bit of blue brown his uh, his white and then we 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 change the scene and now we know we are in a different scene and the color kind of kind of changes to this purple and um yeah let me show you the next page shifts again because now um it's not anymore the romantic beginning now it's kind of sobering everybody's gotten a bit drunk so the colors get dull beautiful um, sequence close zoom out and then zooming further away and then showing us the room and this is also pretty beautiful i'm just sharing with you what i like and here he's talking and then this panel very interesting he lights himself um, a cigarette and it's all like just black and white with the colors and Eduardo Riso does also a lot of this one um, we will see it later where he puts the people I would say in the shadows as you can see here um, or as you can see here a lot of wait a second we have the restaurant scene yeah here they take place at a restaurant and as you can see um, like they're sitting in the shadow pretty moody pretty beautiful like maybe maybe something uh, you can take for your comics too and as you can see here the color shifts again here we have lo like this brown and red um, because the mood is shifting and as we come here everything gets much cooler much colder because uh, the psychological um, how do you say the psychological the, f the feeling of the protagonist shifts to very cold and this guy um, kind of gave him a bump or bumped him up in the hallway and this guy this milo is out for um, violence and yeah and then the tone shifts again as you can see it goes from cold to now um, yeah, I don't know blue blue and purplish and then as the violence starts we get this cold tones and then we get dark red again and yeah here again a beautiful shot of the city um, pretty reduced not much to show um, besides uh, lonely streets um, rain um, the rain effect is beautiful here. I don't know. Maybe let's zoom in a bit of on this. Um, I've seen this also on Batman Year One. Beautiful, where the streets um, just fade and you get this effect. Pretty cool. Um, and again, here the perspective we have um, always the camera pointing either in this direction or in this direction and then tilted a bit. And here we'll tilt in this direction. Here we have um, an upshot like this. Try to avoid flat shots, like create a third dimensional room. And here he grabs the car. As you can see, the car stands like this and Milo is approaching like this. The camera goes somewhere like this. And then we jump again. We're in the car. Camera is looking from the back and front then we see what a protagonist sees and it's shot directly 
at this uh, br briefcase, but the car is standing like this, as you can see. Um, yeah, my hands kind of show the third dimensional room. And here, um, it's an upshot, beautiful hands, but also like, the third dimensional room comes from the camera shooting in this direction. Even though it's a bit flat, it's going this way. And then this agent, uh, Agent Graves, I guess, enters the room. Again, beautiful how the color stays consistent on this page. It's like brown and blue and yellows. And here is like um, orange, yellow, and it mimics here too. But let me jump a bit ahead. So I had an okay time reading this. I thought it's going somewhere. Um, but I don't know. It's not really going somewhere. So the story is not completely what I like. But the artwork, the coloring um, and the pacing um, is really great. Like how this is told. Um, for me, this is really a masterpiece and this is also really great this is where the idea for this comic came from um he's eating this hot dog also showing people doing mundane stuff and he's just eating here and here again this um cityscape in the night beautiful coloring very reduced and then we start with crazy colors like uh yeah this purple, blue, just beautiful stuff. Look at the glasses of this guy. And again here the camera always pointing somewhere. Just always try to find the room. I will do it myself. And here the room is like camera go looking this way. Here is also the camera looking this way and yeah. It's also okay to draw and study or steal maybe from your her heroes as long as you're not stealing the page layout. Like when you learn to play the guitar, um, there are a couple of different things you can do. But learning songs and trying to learn the song will give you a lot of knowledge. And then after that, maybe comes a bit of theory. What is, what is the... What is the composer doing what is he playing what chords is he playing and so at first you just mimic the superficial and then after that you start to understand um, what's underneath it like the camera angles the positions the three-dimensional room the figures and um, what's underneath here all the anatomy and then you can start to reduce yeah I'm kind of um, wrapping up this video I hope you could take something from it but if you want a comic with very pretty pictures and if you like this um, here it was like definitely reminding me a bit of um, Frank Miller beautiful stuff story wise um, not much here I would say because it feels a bit boring uh, it's nothing new it's like uh, very well stolen from other stories, but it's nothing you have not seen somewhere else. It's um, the same plot, the same, I don't know, the same dialogue. It is masterfully um, done, but it's very dull, I would say. And it's a shame because uh, the art is so great and i don't know maybe it's not easy to make a great story but this just i don't know was too little to keep my attention and well executed um but the story doesn't give a lot and yeah this one this this one looks like taken from sin city like these two scenes just prettier i mean and improving on things is definitely valid so if you want to take something from here and improve it just do it i give you <laughs> the permission we see us in the next movie in the next video and until then keep drawing comics and we see us see ya